the views and opinions expressed on Deliberately Linked are entirely those of the host, who are completely responsible for all show content. These views and opinions are not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure in any way any kind of condition, or to promote any specific lifestyle, belief, religion, political affiliation, or personal practice. Nor is the information presented deemed to be accurate or verifiable. What is up, deliberately linked viewers? Lace them up and lock it in. Because on today's show, my brother Mark is going to talk about what it means to deal with bad company. And I ain't even talking about the 80s song. Okay, no, okay. No, no. I'm talking about <laughs> influences in your life. Maybe not the way you're thinking right now that you heard that. But yes, right. we're definitely talking about bad company. I'm, I'm curious. I'm, you haven't told, obviously, you haven't told me a lot about your no. topic, but you said it has something to do with music. It does. It does. So I, it's all kind of like full circle on that. Okay. You know, I went back to some of my childhood stuff on that. All but, right. It's um, going to be good. I think it's, uh, you know what? It actually surprised me because it wasn't, it wasn't my idea. It was gifted to me. Okay. So I just went with it. Yeah. Um, and the way it was affecting me in the ways, you know, some things that uh, I've experienced. But before I get started in a bad company, mm -hmm. um, you're going, are we talking about a lizard? Chameleon? <laughs> Something like that. Something Chameleon? like that. Chameleon. 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 Can you see me? <laughs> okay. So not like Verizon, can you hear me? Right. Well, now, it's, now he's Sprint. But you're right. He did now switch. He's Sprint. He did he, switch. He's a traitor. Yeah, um, he did switch. So can yeah. you see me? Yeah, Chameleon. I'm excited. We're going to. Yeah. We're going to dive in today um, some individuals maybe in our lives that live a life as a chameleon. Okay. And kind of what that means. And, and the hopefully positives, it's not you. And the, right. And the positives, the negatives. And you, you might very well listen to this and be like, oh my gosh, that is me. But we're going to okay. talk about if it is you, it's okay sometimes. Okay. We're going to dive okay. into it though. I like it. And I know Mark and I have touched on this topic just probably talking about some individuals in our life, um, not necessarily in a negative way, but that live a more so chameleon life. Okay. And so I'm excited to hear actually how Mark dives into this topic with us today. I'm intrigued. Yeah, so it's going to be a good one. But before we get going, we're going to thank Visionary Meals, our sponsor today. Always, always. Always with us. So thank you, Visionary Meals. Um, a side of Visionary Meals that we have not talked on, guys, yes, the answer is yes. Visionary Meals does catering. Uh, they do caterings for weddings, banquets, uh, graduation parties, you name it, big to small. Uh, they have been involved with many corporate catering events um, at some local hospitals and are starting to dive into some uh customers for the wedding time um, planning now for the following year of summer uh, spring and what might shows be. that you care more about the people attending your event <laughs> right. than a healthy meal heck yeah seriously though i've been to a lot of catered events mm -hmm. some of which was really good food some of yeah. which is just god awful yeah but very rarely do you go in especially if you're people like you and i who right. like to eat on a structured you know type of menu yep. and yep. you're like okay i can eat this and be guilt-free for sure. Yeah. yeah that's I mean, fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Nothing better than being able to have a very tasty meal. That, but the rumor is, too, I've heard they're going to be sending us some new apparel as well. That is true. Coming soon. I'm Coming excited. Soon, so. I'm excited. I, I like new clothes. Me, too. There's nothing, there's nothing better than looking no. a little fresh. I like it. I yeah, like I'm it. I'm with you. I would agree, okay. brother. I would agree. All right. Let's go to the show. Let's dive into this. So, uh, chameleons, guys. Okay, you're probably talking about, like Mark said, oh, we're talking about a lizard. What, is, what does that mean to be a chameleon? And for our, and our, our viewers viewing this via YouTube, uh, bear with me. I had a ton of thoughts, you know, when I thought of this topic and started diving into some literature actually on this topic. So I put it all on paper. So you guys viewing, um, excuse the lack of eye contact maybe a little bit, but I'm going to be, I'm going to be heavily in my notes right now because I know there's a ton of good content and I just want, I don't want to make sure you guys miss this. I think on the other, I th on it, you know, honestly, for those who view us on YouTube, I want you guys to understand it's not a lack of preparation. What it is, is it's a, it is a preparation. Prepar yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And we want to make sure that we're giving you guys, especially when we start speaking fact, statistics, sure. anything of like that. Um, guys, we're, we're not photogenic memory type people. Um, <laughs> no. So we want to make sure that we're bringing you the best content. And I know if you were to look at this notebook, you would know this <laughs> isn't just a fly by night. That's why it's written down. Right. It's preparation. This is a study. This is a study for you guys because yeah. we don't want to deliver BS to you. We talked about last episode, facts, yeah, facts, facts. No. So we're here to bring you actual literature. Um, I do the same thing. Facts. Just so yeah. everybody knows. I do the same exact thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. No, very good. So are you a chameleon? And you're like, okay, wait, what, what's a chameleon? And, you know, 
or better known maybe as social chameleons to some of us out there. And we're going to kind of dive into what that means. But basically what a social chameleon is, someone, people who change according to the circumstances that they're living in. So you might be sitting there now and be like, okay, I'm starting to understand this. If, I, if you know what the, the lizard is, it's a lizard is a chameleon. They change yeah. to their, yeah. their, their adaptation, their, their, the circumstances that they're living in. And I think their chameleons, environment. their environment, yeah. they yeah. do it to protection, basically. It is, 100%. To hide, yep. um, to hide or their, fit in. It's their main defense. They ain't got like a stinger or nothing. Correct. So, yeah. yeah. That's how they, they, chameleons are actually beautiful creatures, uh, some of the colors that they can change yeah. to. Um, but so, you know, when I got to thinking of this topic, you know, I, I really found myself categorizing um, types of changers into two categories. And one, like I just touched on, a social chameleon. And the other I kind of came across slash came up with, I think it's really interesting, uh, social zebra. Now, stay with me here, okay? No, I'm already with you. Stay I with get me, it. all right? So I promise you when I'm done, you either, you're either going to be sitting there uh, and you're going to be able to say, I know someone that's like this, or you're going to unfortunately maybe find yourself that you were like this. Um, but as we dive into this, so what, so what is a social chameleon? And as I dove into this topic... I came across this awesome study um, done by, uh, done by the, a guy by the name of Mark Snyder, and he is a social psychologist, um, I believe in Wisconsin, Minnesota or Wisconsin, and through his study of social chameleons, he found social chameleons are tremendously unhappy people. Yeah. Like yeah. unhappy people, and you're, you might be sitting there, okay, but why? Well, let's just, let's just think about what, as we dive into this topic, what why a chameleon that lives this type of lifestyle, why would they, why would they be unhappy? I mean, aren't, aren't these people, as you learn about what a social chameleon is, it might sound like, okay, aren't these people really good at what they do and, and they do this to be happy people? And you're going to find that that's not necessarily the case, okay? So, um, so as we think about this, you constantly live within, um, if you are a social chameleon, you're constantly living with, you know, constant contradiction, Yep. In your life, yep. um, to either oscillate you, isolate you uh, between what 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 it's called the private face and the public mask. All right, so leaving you with this 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 uh, psychologist found that people that have lived this lifestyle have have are now living lives with true psychological exhaustion from constantly having to put this mask on that isn't real. It's upkeep. It is. Yes. It is. Yes. yes. So these people that are, are, I mean, just think about it for a second. Some examples for you. Like, <laughs> have you ever been to uh, a group of people or hanging out with some people, you know, friends, family, whatever it might be, and you just laugh at something that's just not funny? <laughs> You know what I mean? Well, my kid was my kids would tell you that no, I don't do that. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's good. But I would tell you, but seriously though, in all seriousness, I think everybody listening, and I will include myself. Yeah. Um, we've all had moments of this. Oh, I know I exactly what you. you're talking about. I know, I promise you, everyone has had a moment so, like this. Crazy, crazy fun fact for this part of the show. Get it. Earlier, Josh and I were texting. We we're talking about the titles of our show, and that's all we give each other. I said I was battling between two, and I shelved one and I brought you guys a different one. The other one I was I shelved was called people pleasers. Oh shoot. <laughs> Seriously. That's crazy. Because that is people mm -hmm. pleasing is I would not say the entire thing of a social chameleon, but right. it is definitely a bracket. For sure. Definitely a bracket. No doubt. Yeah. yeah. No doubt. Yeah. So uh, like Mark said, we all at one point in our life have have found ourselves being a social chameleon. Yeah. And I'm going to touch here in a little bit here on how that's not necessarily a bad thing, but the psychological damage it can have on somebody um, if, if it's overused uh, or if it's not controlled in sure. the right way. Um, but like I said, you know, la <laughs> laughing, simple stuff, laughing at stuff that's just not funny, um, trying to fit in or trying to um, be polite, as someone might say, you know, I'm sorry, that's not polite. If you ask me, if your joke's not funny, I'm not going to laugh at it. Yeah. <laughs> that's all there is to it. Be better. Um, living compulsively or always trying, always trying to make a good impression on people, yep. kind of like what Mark just touched on. And for examples, as far as that goes, I see this, I see this a ton um, in my life with you know friends and family ar around me, and and I'm by no means I'm going to call anybody out on this show, um, just to you know a, <laughs> just to protect them or whatnot. But you know you see this constantly, you know, with people and and work. And like I said, we're going to touch on that and how it's not necessarily a bad thing. But the biggest the biggest area where I see people be chameleons are typically um, either with a friend or unfortunately with the opposite sex. 
Oh um, yeah. You know, yeah. trying to trying to change the person that they are to try to uh, to attract the opposite sex. Yeah. Um, and and to in order to impress them. And it, it truly, I think that's, it's, it's, I want to call it the, the main destroyer of relationships or ter- turmoil between a relationship. Um, but that, that mask is eventually going to come off. You know what? Well, every great Halloween costume, <laughs> you grow out of it. You do. Exactly. Yes. You grow out of it. That mask will eventually come off. So your true colors or more so the person that you truly are to your core will eventually come out. So in marriage counseling, what we call this is growing apart. That's what yeah. they usually say. Well, we just grew apart. <laughs> right. No, here's what happened. You two were not completely honest with each yeah. other. So instead of coming into the relationship and saying, this is who I am, and don't get me wrong, there are times in every relationship where you can form. Correct. There are things that they enjoy that you don't necessarily enjoy, Correct. but you find the things in it that you enjoy. Yes. That's not being a chameleon. That's give and take. Correct, yeah. But it's when you just, okay, whatever your inner star are now mine. Right. Whatever that you enjoy, I now enjoy. Yeah. Whatever it is I think, I think you want me to be is who I'm going to be, where in nine times out of 10, the person probably doesn't want that. They right. want you just to be you. Mm-hmm. But once they grow accustomed to that, And then when you change, because you can no longer keep up the facade, they're like, what the heck happened? This is the person I fell in love with. Or here's even better. All of my reactions, my daily habits, the way I respond to you are built on this person. They no longer apply. Correct. Yes. That's difficult. That's money right there. That's, yeah, fantastic. No, very true. That's so true. And and that's the thing, you know, with social communities, anything goes. So... As a social chameleon, what you you lose your you lose your dignity. Yeah. All right. You you lose principles that you yeah. grew up with, um, and systems of values in order to a- achieve the success or uh, impression that you were trying to yeah. portray. And like I said, this leaves psychological ex- exhaustion, guys. All right. So imagine putting on that mask every time you get around someone different. Imagine how exhausting that is, and you can't just be the person that you are, true to your core. But and you go to this friend group, you go to this girlfriend or boyfriend, you go to this office of work of whatever it is and it's a different max for every individuals that you surround yourself with and a different person that you were trying to portray yourself it's a, as. it's a book of lies it is it is, it is. It, it, so yeah. it's it's truly can be exhausting all right so but with all that exhaustion aside and and i think truly how being a, a social communion can be in your benefit, okay? I don't want you guys to sit there and think that, all right, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm bashing on people that aren't able to uh, adapt to maybe the environment that they're in. No, I think that's completely separate, especially talking about business or work. Well, you're, you're ta- there's so many categories to this. And you, and you said earlier, there's so much information. Yeah. Right now, we are specifically talking about personal relationships. Correct. Because there are moments in time where you have to go in and you play a role. Yes. That's your business role. Right. I go to I go to work every day and put on a business mask. Yes. That's not my personal life. I don't need to know these people on that level. They need to know me as the business person. Yes. Same with you. Exactly. Yeah. No, I mean that's how, that's how you you need to, you know, one of my good buddies said one time he's like he he actually applauded himself for he's very good at being a chameleon, yeah. chameleon yeah. um surrounding himself in his group and I love this kid to death. And you know <laughs> Ever since he said that, I've just kind of gone back and forth on that because when you know, is he really being him? That when is he really being him? And you know, and honestly, like I said, we said at the beginning of the show, we have all been here at times. You know, I, I myself, and I know Mark is just as good at it. You know, unfortunately or fortunately, however you want to look at, I, I can be a very good chame- chameleon. Like, oh I, yeah, you put me in any circle, any friend group, I know exactly how to fit in with them. Whether I enjoy it or not, yeah, yeah. Whether you, I, to me, it's unfortunate. And, yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. Is if it's work related, business related, you know, probably that's about it. Um, that's where it's in your benefit because it you're able to put on that face to build that trust that you maybe to, or unfortunately in business maybe manipulate. Yeah. The way that you need to in order for something to go in your favor. What that's, you lo- that's just good business. That's just good business. The, the, key, the key that you have to look for in, in both of these areas, whether it's business or, or private, you cannot lose your authenticity. Correct. Yes. You yes. cannot lose that. That cannot be the thing you sacrifice. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna touch on that. But you yeah, know, that's you know what I mean? that's that's very but good. From a psychological standpoint, I know you love psychology in school. Yeah. And it was hands down one of my favorite subjects. Yeah. Um the number one thing people like this lack, and 
the number one thing that most of these people suffer from, and it's why they are the way they are, is a lack of self-confidence. Yep. Because there is no way that you can be this person, right. function at this level, and then truly know yourself. Correct. So if you don't know who you are, how do you expect you, yourself, whether it's the listener or the viewer, or even myself, to be self-confident in who we are? Mm -hmm. You can't. No. You can't. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. And I think wrapping that kind of up of a social chameleon, um, then we then we kind of dive in, okay, Josh, you know, if we're not supposed to be a, a social chameleon, then what what should we be? And this is what this is what I love. I yeah. love I love the idea of being I call it a social zebra. All right. So listen listen to me on um, why is the zebra white or black? Uh, fun fact. See, I don't animals. know. I don't know. If anybody knows, <laughs> that's your fun fact, you get two shirts. Yeah. If it can be researched and proven correctly, you tell I, me if the zebra is white or black, I want to know. Man, I don't, I don't the only know. thing I know about zebras is what happened on that like cartoon show like Madagascar, because that's what my kids watch back in the day. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's that's a good question. I'm not sure. Um okay, but listen, listen, listen to me closely. All right. So no matter where a zebra is, they will always be the same. That's yes. all there is to it. Yeah. Uh, the stripes on a zebra Do never change. change okay. Yep. So you might ask Josh, okay, doesn't that doesn't that make us vulnerable then? Now we can't blend in in environments like the chameleon. You know, now we are vulnerable to who we are, and I, I agree with you to an extent on that. But our stripes may not be the be the skin, the style, the character, or tone of voice that pleases everyone. However, the few who are captivated by our authenticity and curious. Non, non nonsense will be our best allies. Best all right, depositors. Yes, there we go. Coming back to it. Yeah. So, and basically, what that means, guys, is the circle. Your circle of people might drastically diminish by you changing from a social camellia chameleon to a social zebra. Your circle of people that you currently have right now, if you are, if you find yourself that you need to make this transition in your life, that circle of people might drastically dimi diminish. But what I can almost guarantee you, your circle of people that you now establish or circle of people that stay with you or you create are the real ones for life. So, so Josh knows this about me. Uh, and if you do know me and you're listening to the show, you'll understand that what I'm saying is completely factual to the book of Mark. I don't believe in friendship. This is why, right yeah. here. This is this is why. Yeah. Um, if if I am going to call you my friend, your family, yes. your family. I mean, because once you get into that circle with me, it's literally I'm the guy you can call at 3 a.m. and I will be there. Oh, you're yeah. the guy or the gal that I can call at 3 a.m. and you're going to be there. Correct. This is where friendship has gone awry. Yes. We don't really know each other. Um, my I have three kids now in high school. It's embarrassing what they call friendship. Mm -hmm. It is. There is no loyalty. It is. It's nothing but it, it's literally the jockeying of position. Right. It's trash talk nonstop. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's what y'all call friendship? Then I don't want any of it. Right. That's what that chameleonism is. Because when I'm here, this is who I have to be. But when I'm here, this is what they expect me to be. And when I'm over there, that's what I have to be over there. Okay, well, none of that's real. Mm -hmm. None of that's true. So therefore, if you're not being the real you, then neither are the relationships. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's well, just not going to happen. And if you find yourself, oh, I'm only down to two friends. I'm going to tell you right now, you have two real friends, two real, true, trusting friends. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean they have to agree with you at all times, but friends, yeah. people that come when they're needed, that you can depend on, that alone is worth a thousand, a million fake relationships yeah. based upon this whole chameleon topic. Correct. Yeah. And you know, by the way, I'm Josh's number 11. So there's 10 guys ahead of me <laughs> on the real friendship scale. <laughs> you it's taken like nine episodes to hit that yeah, out. I'm saving it. <laughs> you know who you are in front. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, guys, I think so. I talking to our high schoolers right now, because, um, you know, our high school athletes or just high school viewers, guys, you know, and I'm more basing this. What I'm about to say is based off experience. Um, guys are a little bit better at it than girls. Um, you know, guys, I think definitely play a chameleon role. Um, but I guess what guys allow them to not get involved is, is drama. I, th I think guys are just, they can be just fake and just move on with it with girls. Now it, it not only comes, you know, the reason that high school drama is so prevalent, um, amongst girls is because 
so many girls that walk, you know, the halls of the high school or whatever are, are walking as chameleons. They are walking as like individuals. Of what they think is expected of them. Correct. And they're now, trying to pre- portray this image. Just so we're clear to everybody listening and watching, I blame the guys for that. Okay. Yeah. Explain that. Because if the guys create an environment where a girl can be comfortable with who she is, with what she wears, and you are enjoying her um, company, mm-hmm. not so much based upon based upon uh, what she's willing to reveal right. or where, uh, the degree in which she's willing to go, these girls would have far less of a time. Yeah. If this girl knew I don't have to compete with her because she wears a super short dress or super short shorts or, right. or she wears a shirt that's a little more revealing... I think it almost forces other girls into thinking, okay, well, this is what is expected, expected. of me, which is very unfortunate, yeah. um, and especially in this time in society where we are, where we talk constantly about uh, uh, female rights. It's a very hot, popular topic. Yeah. Uh, the empoweration of women, mm-hmm. um, which is a very hot topic. Yes, I is. blame a lot of the male figures. Okay. Um, we as men are called. Right. We are called. And I, I'm not knocking women at all right now, but the Bible is very specific on this. Christ spouse was the church we are to treat females the way christ treated the christ church, treated church. Uh, the bible does use the term um women the weaker vessel he does not mean from a strength standpoint he does not mean from an intelligence standpoint but what he does mean in that standpoint is is they are to walk alongside of us mm-hmm. and if we do not create that environment where they're comfortable doing that they are going to find ways to to make themselves comfortable in doing that yes exactly so we have to make sure that as men we're not only raising men but you and men you and i we're holding ourselves accountable that our wives, uh, the women we are around, are comfortable to be themselves. Yes. Yeah. They don't have to feel like they need to be a chameleon. For sure. Yeah. No, that's... Yeah, I'm glad you tied that into it because that's it all relates back to the Bible. It always it, does. It always does. It always yeah. does. So, and, you know, guys, I, like we briefly touched on there as, we're, as we I quickly conclude this topic... Um, this, this is happening every day, you know, it's happening as individuals, as we both sit here, um, or as you sit there listening or doing whatever you're doing, um, or individuals in your life. And I think, I think the quickest thing is to hear everything that we just did, maybe reevaluate, reassess and, and come to, um, come to, come to the assessment of, okay, if this is, if this is who I am, um, how, what can I do now to, to make these changes? And instead of focusing on um, impressing those individuals that are in your life, let's let's focus on being unique. Because I promise you, what I promise you, why why do we want to be that individual that fits in? Okay, you know, I'm not saying you know be obnoxious and and and, and that way of not yeah. fitting in, but let's let's be unique in the sense that you know you you turn heads because as cliche as it does sound, you turn heads because you are who you are. All right, and 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 I think I think we will see. Um, I I think it comes back to what we've talked about a little while ago, or, or just stop being fake. <laughs> stop yeah. being fake, and and be you for who you are. Well, so I'll I'm going to try to be very quick with this. We've created an environment. Okay, we've created an environment where it takes a hundred takes to get the perfect Instagram picture. Okay, yeah. uh, to the photo chopping, to the yeah. fake magazine covers, right. um, to the expectations of who we are and compared to people that are not real. Right. Okay. They may be real human beings, but the photos and stuff that you see, it's not real. Okay. Yeah. If your pursuit in life is to be the best you, if you're listening right now and you're saying, literally, I, I do, I just want to be the best me, then don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Yeah. Because the right people um, in your life and they, <laughs> They may not be the people you grew up with. They might not be the people you're currently calling friends. They may be the people that you've never really had a real conversation with. Mm-hmm. They're going to accept you for you. Correct. And you know what? Sometimes uh, the best decision is the hard decision. Yeah. But if, if this is what you're going through, if you are wearing yourself out every single day, if you're finding yourself young and on some form of mental health medication, um, you need to figure out why. Right. Now, don't get me wrong. It, genetics is real. And for there sure. are people that just naturally struggle, and I myself am one of them, and I feel for you because I know what that struggle is like. Mm-hmm. But being authentic in who you are is already accepted. You don't need the acceptance of anybody around right. you. Okay? I accept you. Josh accepts you. And I can promise you this. Your Heavenly Father accepts you because Loves he's the one that made you. who you are. Okay? So get comfortable being that zebra because I'm here to tell you, I want to be a zebra. Yep. I want to be a zebra now. That's, That's my it. new thing. I'm going to make a wristband that says be a zebra. <laughs> be a zebra. I'm on <laughs> it. I'm on it. Josh knows I love making little wristbands. Yeah, he's all about it. He's all about it. I love it. little quick hitters that I can remember. Yeah. Yeah. No, good, guys. Yeah, so take off that mask. Um, 
Because if you don't do it now, it's eventually going to come off. Yeah. Um, and just be that light and be that uniqueness to individuals that are walking with that mask on because you might just attract them to your This side. is a great topic to honestly, um, we need to revisit this with some guests in studio. Yeah. Um, because I can think of a handful of people that have lived this life. For sure. And the mask has come off and how they realize it's just changed. Yeah. yeah. So sure. this is, we need to revisit this one. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Fantastic. Good great stuff. brain. Great brain. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Fantastic. Good stuff. Okay. So the fun animal fact uh, <laughs> has been stolen. It has. Tonight. And it's because Josh did bring a great topic. So we, as usual here, we try to be uh, efficient. Mm -hmm. So Josh brought today's fun animal fact. I did. Because it ties in. As fitting as it is. Check this. Chameleons are not deaf, but they do not have an ear opening. Can you believe that? No, because so, it doesn't make any sense. They're not deaf, so they can hear you. But they do not have ear openings. They don't have openings. an ear opening. I didn't dive into uh, the biological reasoning behind this, but they do not have ear openings. So this isn't one of those like sense things where like they got you know antennas. This is like they hear you, but there are they no ear openings. They can still hear you okay. because they are not deaf. Okay. If so. there's like if if there's like an anthropologist, and I think I'm using the right ologist there. Um, <laughs> if there's an anthropologist who may happen to listen to this, or if you know one, reach out because I would love to understand why. Yes. Yeah, I'm with you. I would get. To, I would, I want to know that. Yeah, I didn't have time to look why, but okay. No, that's good. I like that. You get a free T-shirt. That's a good <laughs> hey, one. Thanks, man. That's a good one. You know, no. where I, you know where I live. So I was thinking about this, um, just literally right now. Two things: a Lincoln Meikle probably knows why they don't have ear openings. He probably also he knows. Does? He probably also knows our zebras white or black, because that dude <laughs> knows some random Jeopardy stuff. Well, he's colorblind, so he knows. Okay, white or so black. okay, <laughs> I'm just saying. No, but uh, Lincoln Meikle, uh, for those who are not regular listeners, if you are a regular listener, you're gonna, you're going to know this. But if you're not a regular listener, this show is brought to you by Tip Hat Media. Okay, this production company slash marketing company slash make your stuff look the best company. Do it all. The guy, the guy's a magician. Okay, he makes us sound fantastic. He makes us look fantastic. He not only produces us stuff in a timely manner, oh, but I yeah. say this all the time, and I mean this. Uh, at the bottom of my heart, I mean this. He makes you feel like his only customer. Lincoln has a very unique way of just making you feel ultra important. Mm -hmm. um, what's important to you is important to him, because ultimately you're trying to sell a product, and his product is what's going to do it. Yeah. So he can do. It's like magic. I mean, he can it make is. your companies look fantastic. He can make your products look fantastic. Everything's tip-top professional. Mm -hmm. um, and especially now, I know right now the boom is with realtors. Realtors are eating this guy all oh day. Oh, my gosh. He, um, he was just on a few shots, shoots the other day that he was telling me about it, all over Columbus. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, look him up. Tip Hat Media. You can see him on the gram at Tip Hat Media. You can uh, find him online at tiphatmedia.com. Yeah. He's on Facebook. He's on all the social media sites. And I know that he's produced quite a few portfolios. Yeah. So uh, check him out. Give the guy a call. We absolutely love him. Uh, and the show would not be who we are yeah. without him. So no. And guys, getting to, getting the opportunity to work close with Tip Hat Media, we we get to hear about his other endeavors that he's yeah. involved with with you know all of his content creating. This guy is booking fast. He's filling up. So if you're like, okay, I've heard of this Tip Hat Media. I've got this thing coming up at this time. Um, I'll call him when that time comes. No, 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 no. Call him now. Get on his books. Get in his schedule. Yeah. Uh, because if, if you wait the last minute, it, it might not be an option for you. So take advantage of this guy now. Get in his ear now. Yeah, Tip Hat uh, Media. It's definitely uh, Lincoln Meekle, man. He's the guy. We don't shout out for anybody. No. Gosh, no. <laughs> if you get a shout out on this show, it's because we fully believe in you and <laughs> yeah. your product. It's and I mean it that way. Yeah. You and your product. Yes. It, it's definitely a relationship that we need both of yes. uh, if you want to shout out on this show. so yep. Good stuff. So once again, third week in a row, I'm bringing a topic that was brought to us by a uh, listener. Um, and it, you know, it's funny is it was brought to me and then hindsight kicked in. Okay. So last weekend, I, we, had a, we were at a family wedding and I am ultra, I, I'll do this hopefully without getting emotional. I have two nieces that just graduated high school mm -hmm. um, and I am immensely proud of both of them. Um, they're both doing amazing things in different directions. My one niece uh, went straight into the, the working environment uh, as she's doing school and working full-time gig. Um, she just knows she's going to take a little longer. Yeah. And then my other niece, uh, she is 
actually moving into Ashland University here in about two weeks, and I got to sit down with her and just catch up, see how her summer went. And I asked her this question. Now, this is a girl who played softball in high school, um, was very active in her high school, but not active in the way of a lot of kids are now. She really shied away from the party scene, shied away from the relationship scene, uh, didn't get into any of the drama. And I just asked her, I said, Jazz, why? I said, just, you know, why? And she said, I looked around, I paid attention, and I listened to what was going on, and I knew I wanted nothing to do with that. <laughs> wow. So at the time, I just looked at her, and I, I remember telling Heather, and I said, babe, I'm like, man, Jazz is mature beyond her years. Yeah, I'm so proud of her. Um, it's amazing. And I even told her, how you survive that environment is impressive. <laughs> Super impressive. I mean, right. you high school kids, I'm not going to lie. I'll throw a shout out to you now. Um, it's, you guys got it rough. I mean, you guys are getting distractions from every every way you turn. Not only distractions, but temptations. Yeah, just even our high schoolers aside, our Christians. Oh, I mean, hundred percent. It's, it's a battle out there. So, so I just I said that I was like, I'm just so proud of you. You know, and you're doing fantastic things. We've already scheduled. I'm gonna. She moves up. She has no class on Friday, so I'm gonna swing up on Friday, take her out to lunch, buy her some groceries, and just spend the day with her. You know, nice. Yeah, just have some fun with her. Nice. Um, she's earned it. But then I get approached by a listener. And they said, I would really love you to do um, a show on music. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And I said, uh, you know, I hit them up again. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, just the positive and negative effects of what music you listen to. I'm like, okay, I like this. Yeah. And this is where the jazz came in. She said, I just listened. So there's some unique facts oh, okay. about music and how the body's sensory is programmed. Yeah. So, and it happens to me all the time. We pray before the show, and I just told you, I got goosebumps and dopamine was released. So, dopamine is your feel good chemical. Your brain releases it um, in many areas where something good's happening. You're right. excited. Mm -hmm. Now, that can be positive and negative because it directly affects motivation and addiction. Yes. Okay. So, you have to understand that. But when you get the goosebumps and the chills, when you're listening to a song, something is affecting you, that's what's happening. Your brain is releasing this chemical in your body and you're creating a connection. Now, what's unique about music. There are only a very few things in your entire life that does this. It actually utilizes the entire brain. Hmm. Okay? You're talking about auditory. You're talking about creativity. You're talking about memory. All those things are firing off you mean at the to same time. to create music? No, while you're listening oh, while to you're it. while you're listening. Okay. Your brain is listening in every area of it. Huh. And they did a study, and it's called a functional MRI. I mean, most of us, if you played sports, have had an MRI. Um, a lot of people who haven't played sports have had MRIs. But this one's called a functional MRI. So they're doing the MRI Why this is actually happening. And this is how they discovered it. So your entire brain is functioning while you're listening to music. Like, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's interesting. So it's like, this is how the thing, and it's, it's, I understand we're talking strictly on music, but this is how you hear. Right. You hear with the full brain. Yeah. So what's actually happening in the study, where the study went with this was, is what you're hearing and you're inviting into your brain actually creates this perception of your reality. Okay. So you're, you're bringing your reality. So, mu so much of this is brought in from eyesight. We think, well, I see it. This is what it's going to be. And it does have an effect. I think we lose sight of what we're hearing. So yeah. if we're listening to negative things, our reality is going to become negative. If we're listening to positive things, our reality is going to become positive. Yeah. If we're listening to happy things, sad things, oh. we begin to absorb that into this reality For that sure. we are actually creating. Well, I think I think of it this way. You know, how many of us have whatever environment we're getting ready to walk into, that is the type of music that we choose to listen to. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. When I used to play ball and say, I'm sure same with you, you know, before game day or on game day. I would listen to music that sounded like I'm about to take someone's head off. Yes. <laughs> I mean, just because that was where I wanted to get mentally. I mean, it's, it's, yes. as bad as it sounds. No, but I mean, a lot of people do that. Right. A lot of people do that. Yeah. And it's crazy um, to think about this, but the re you bring that up so perfectly. Your heart actually begins to mimic the beat of the music. Yes. Yeah. Like a lot of people think, oh, okay, well, I like this song. I get hype. Like I'm hyped. But the reality is, is as you have crescendos and all those things, your heart beat is actually changing with them. Right. So music actually modulates the human body. It changes your heart rate. It changes your blood pressure. It changes your respirations of what you're breathing. Like all of this is being affected. Yeah. I think we lose sight of that in so many areas that what is entering into our ears, and we've said this on here, what goes in comes out. Mm -hmm. 
But actually, what is going into our ears, the music we're listening to, the people we're talking to, the podcasts we're listening to, yeah. the shows we're involved in, and that's all entering us is having a major effect on us. Yeah. So if you're able to sit there and put all that distraction aside and stay focused, that's unreal. Right. Like that is absolutely unreal. And the reason I called tonight's show Bad Company is because when we think bad company, we assume the people we are hanging out with. Yeah. We, we naturally associate that with human beings. Yeah. And we talk on here, depositors, withdrawers. And as I thought about it more and more, I was thinking, well, our environment could be a depositor and a withdrawer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what kind of environment are you creating? Okay. And we talked about this earlier, too. The Bible always has shed light on every subject. Mm -hmm. And so as I was praying about this, I'm doing some research. Um, one of my favorite persons is Paul. I mean, we all know this. Paul's written many of my books, favorite books of the Bible. But he actually says this in 1 Corinthians. He says, bad company corrupts good character. How perfect. <laughs> how perfect. I've read the Bible, I don't know how many times, yeah. and it's never stuck out to me. Right. Never stuck That's out good. to me. But as here, I'm reading this, and there it is. Bad company, you know, corrupts good character. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, this is controllable at a very early age. I mean, if you're a high schooler, if you're a middle schooler, if you're even in, you know, the, the fourth, the fifth grade area, and you're listening to some of the music that's out there now, oh, yeah. and then you're wondering why am I having anger issues? Right. Uh, do I not like listening to adults? <laughs> yeah. why, do, why don't I get along with my friends? It may be as simple as the stuff that you're allowing to get through your mm -hmm. ear. Well, my, it's funny you say that because at, at that at young age, intermediate, middle school age, and before, I, I never understood then, but, you know, years after I did, you know, my mom was always very controlling, we'll call it, on what type of music I listened yeah. to. I was like, Mom, what do you mean I can't listen to this rock band? That's everyone at school listens to it. And, it, it, and she obviously explained, but at that age, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to understand it. But it's so true. I mean, at that young age, you're, you're, you're de in that development stage. Yes. And so what yes. you're putting in is more than likely is what's going to come out. Absolutely. I mean, I, I just, I could not, it's funny because when she said, I'd love to talk about, you know, the positive and the negative effects, because there is, there's positives to music. I, oh I listen to gosh. music, I, I listen to two types of music, basically. I listen to old country yep. and I listen to, I listen to Christian, Christian. contemporary. Yeah. Okay. Those are my two, my two musics. Yeah. But I, I can literally put on some Christian contemporary music and l all my troubles go away. Oh, man. And I'm not saying they literally go away, but at that time, I'm now filled with the Spirit. I'm feeling the faith, mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, God's in control. I can let go of this. Yeah. It, there's a definite positive to that stuff. Oh, my gosh, yeah. But it's like in those moments in time, what are you reaching over for? Like I asked the, the listener and the viewer, what are you reaching for? Because if you're just compounding negative on top of negative, I hate to break it to you, this isn't math. A negative and a negative does not create a positive. <laughs> yeah. It's just going to create more negativity. Correct. And we have to understand, he saw this coming. Right. Obviously, Paul's sitting in jail, and Paul's like, hey, guys, FYI, <laughs> bad company corrupts good character. <laughs> yeah. Now, it's amazing, because I'm like, Paul, you're hanging out with some pretty bad company. These are Roman soldiers. <laughs> yeah. But what he's doing is he's like, I'm surrounding myself with the church and the spirit. For sure. This is what I'm allowing in here. Right. I mean, he even goes in even further. Actually, it's not him, but it's uh, Saul. Um, I shouldn't say Saul. Solomon, uh, he, he makes this comment in Ecclesiastes. He says, it is better to listen to the rebuke of a wise person, your mother. It's better mm -hmm. to listen to your mother than to listen to the songs of fools. Yeah. I mean, we are having a, such a negative effect on this country, on this culture, on this society right now. They're singing about it. They're writing songs about it. Most of it is uh, either derogatory towards women, mm -hmm. words that I would never allow in my home. Oh, right. uh, a lot of it is derogatory towards race, words I would never allow in my home. Yep. And this is the music that our children are listening to. This is the music that adults are listening to. You're making these free choices to have this very negative perception because what you're hearing is what you're creating. Mm -hmm. I was just in Old Navy over the weekend with my wife. We're doing some school shopping with the kids, with the youngest kid. And uh, there were two African-American women in the waiting area, and I'm in the waiting area, and beautiful little African-American girl. I mean, she had a great smile. And she walked up, door swings open, and she goes, oh, excuse me. And I just looked at her and said, you have great manners. And the mom's initial reaction was like, you know, mm -hmm. get, she gave me this, like, look, and I said, you've done a really good job. I said, her manners are fantastic. Yeah. I had to literally face punch that ice that was about to form. Yeah. Because... It's not, I'm not racist. I would not assume she's racist, but maybe a lot of her interaction with people mm -hmm. of the other color 
opposite color, uh, you know, has not been good. Right. And I'm like, so I've taken this responsibility now that I'm going to break that down. Every opportunity I get of anybody who is uh, different nationality, different color, I don't care. I'm going to make sure that they know that not all of us are bad people. Not all men are bad mm -hmm. people because we have corrupted the society. Yeah. And music is a huge part of that. Well, music, I would imagine, was originally designed for the, for the soul. I mean, that soul music yeah. to, 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 to feel good. And it's transformed. And, and don't get me wrong. Unfortunately, probably from the beginning, there was it, it, music was also shared um, to express yourself. And, yes. and individuals that maybe were or are living in a dark place use music to express themselves. And therefore, it spreads like a wildfire to individuals that either are in that same place and it just makes things worse or individuals that listen to that and that go to that dark place. But it, it's so it's so true how it, it it's changed our society um, for the good and the bad. I mean, I, as you were talking about this topic, I thought of the other day I was I was in just our downtown here and it was it was a nice evening. My wife and I went and got got some wits at a local uh, it's custard <laughs> place. Wits frozen here, custard here. originated here in Granville, Ohio. If you gotta, haven't tried it, find it. Gotta have it and. It was uh, a, a teenager, and I actually I, I I looked and I knew who the kid was, and I'm I'm not gonna call him out, but he pulled up to a light, and I I know his age, so I know he just got his license. And don't get me wrong, I was I was in these shoes once once before. Now you're all mature, <laughs> right? So I, I you know I, I'm not bashing him, but he pulled up to this light. It it was a nice peaceful evening, a ton of families out on, on the on Broadway there getting ice cream, having a family night, and this kid pulls up at the stoplight, has his windows down, just got his license, and he's blaring music, and it's F this and that, yes, like, yes. just saying things. And I'm, like, almost embarrassed that I knew who that person was. Yes. Because I just, I, I could see the families around, like, oh, my gosh. And this kid's over here, like, lean back, one hand on the steering wheel, like, oh, I'm so cool now. Being a social chameleon, because yes. he thinks that's what's expected and of that's, him. And that's what I was going to say. That's funny how our topics really have tied in so much here, because this kid, this individual that so many are like, are doing this to, to fit in, to impress, and it's just, no. <laughs> no offense, brother. It's not impressive. It's not. And unfortunately, and I mean this unfortunately, you, you, the reality, this perception of your reality that you're creating, you're also creating a perception for everybody else mm -hmm. that's looking at you, and that's probably not a good reality. Right. And I hate to break this to you, it's going to take a lot longer to better the perception they now have of you yes. than the literally the 60 the, seconds at that, that stoplight that you just re, re, yeah. you just destroyed it. Right. You just destroyed Imagine it. Imagine if you could just pause time and, and, and go 20 years forward and just look it back at yourself. And, I and, and a lot of people like, will say, that. oh, well, everybody went through the stage. We got to take it easy on them. No, you're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. Everyone went through the stage. Everybody did. But you know what I did? I didn't have to live it on social media. Right. I didn't have to live it in those ways. And I'll be awesome. I'll be the first one to tell you too. When I got home, because one of those people called my dad, mm -hmm. my dad's like, uh, no more car. <laughs> right. So there was actually some form of a discipline because of that. I sure. knew better than to act that way. Yeah. I knew better than to play that music in my vehicle. Yeah. I'm not saying it wasn't there. I'm not saying I didn't hear it and listen to it when I was at that stage. Yeah. But as I've matured, the job of every person that has matured, with age you grow wisdom, and it is to pass that down. Yes. Because if we do not pass that down, we are losing a generation. And we're seeing less and less of it. And that's the whole reason for this topic. Yeah. The whole reason for this topic is, is we've allowed this corruptible music. Right. And I even think about this too when she brought this topic up. I was thinking about it to myself. Now with these mass shootings, they're wanting to blame it on video games. And some people think that's completely ridiculous. I'm not saying it's a whole part of it, but by God, I would say it's a percentage of the issue. Oh, it's, yeah. I, would say I had an older percent. son who's like, I want to go to the army and be a sniper. Why? Why well, play modern warfare? I'll be really good at it. You must be crazy. <laughs> Stupid. I told him, I'm like, son, that's not how that works. Yeah. People don't get to go in, hey, power me up, power me up. There are no extra lives. Well, but we've created... Yeah a different reality. We have. I just saw on the news, I don't know if we talked about it on this show already or not, or if you and I were just talking about whoever that was, but this kid put on his Snapchat story, uh, he panoramming around guns and stuff, and he said, like, how I'm going to be walking into whatever event that was coming up. And FBI was knocking on that kid's door like a day later. Like, Yeah. I was just well, like, there was a young he, man. I don't think he had any intention to, but I'm like, 
What makes you think to? Put well, guess that what? Out there? I, I'm not a social comedian, so I ain't laughing at that joke because that joke sucks. <laughs> it's horrible. But there was just that young man up in Northern Ohio. Uh, he had, I can't remember, it was dozens of guns, like ten thousand rounds. I'm like, how does an 18 year old boy gain all of this? Yeah, like why? <laughs> I mean, it's it blows my mind, mm-hmm. and that's what we're allowing in. And now that you guys have all heard this and you have understood that what you're letting in has a drastic effect on you and i'm not talking about just your heart i'm not talking about just your brain i'm talking about the reality in which you're walking every single right. day because that reality does not stop at you nope. that reality has a wake and that wake ripples out and affects so many other people oh. so if you don't care enough about yourself you should care about those that are around you if you're an adult and you're listening to this type of music in your vehicle with children in your car or teenagers realize this they're impressionable people, and you're having a life-altering effect on them. Very much so. I mean, the words that the songs are using that we wouldn't want to use, I would never use some of these words in the direction of any woman, right? let alone a loved one. And this is how people are learning and talking to each other? Yeah. I mean, folks, it's got to change. It's got to start with us. Yeah. I mean, Paul said again in Luke, he said, the eye is the lamp of your body. What you're seeing is the lamp of your body. And he said, a healthy eye is full of light. Yeah. It's seeing positivity. It's creating right. a positive reality for others to perceive. But he said it's the eye that is unhealthy is full of darkness. Yeah. And the way you get an unhealthy eye is the reality you're around. Mm-hmm. So if you're not creating and listening to a good reality, and if your heartbeat is not beating to a good reality, you're not going to see the light. Nope. No. We just got to be better. We got to be better. And we that's do. every avenue of life. Yeah. Not just the way you act, but the way you even treat yourself. Right. Treat yourself better. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be a chameleon. <laughs> Don't be a chameleon. Be a zebra. Be a zebra. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> yeah. Be a zebra. Fun animal facts. You might be winning be a zebra wristband. Yeah, I might just I might be painted up as a zebra next show. I like <laughs> just it. Go I full like out. It. Why not? I like it. No, good. Why not? Good stuff. Good stuff. No, brother. I thank you again, whoever. I don't, maybe people don't I'll like sharing what. topics with no, people. It's a, it's <laughs> a shout out to sharing. her. Uh, her oh. name, Crystal from uh, Central Ohio. Crystal okay. from Central Ohio. Crystal, thank us. you. Yeah. Crystal, we appreciate you uh, tuning in with us. We appreciate you being vocal about yeah. what you wanted to hear. Crystal is super excited. We're now on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> Just for you, Crystal. <laughs> Just for you. And speaking of that, thank you for bringing that up, Mark. Yeah. We are officially on iTunes, guys. Far more difficult than we expected, but yes. we're there. For those that have done that seamlessly, um, congratulations. Congrats. Congrats. We didn't. We did not. But, hey, we got to figure it out. And um, thank you to, again, Tip Pat Media for making that happen for us. Lincoln worked tirelessly on that. He knew how important it was. Yes. Yeah. So with that being said, guys, we just so you guys know moving forward, because we all have our favorite platform and different areas that we like to view things and different phones out there. So we are on SoundCloud. We are on Spotify now. We are on, of course, iTunes and, of course, YouTube. Yeah. All right. So Twitter, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, as far as keeping yeah. up with us on up-to-date information coming to you guys. But if you guys don't mind, uh, whatever platform that you, that you follow us on, like, subscribe, share with us. Um, and again, just like Crystal did in our, in our past episode, another individual did share, sh- shared a topic that they wanted to hear. Um, guys, we're all ears. and Communicate we would, with us. We would love to, to I mean, talk about what you guys chances have. Chances are, if it's important to you, it's important to us. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. And yeah, um, yeah I think and that's And some great. exciting things. I know in the near future, we'll actually be doing some live events. We, ha- we um, do have some in the books. We have some of those coming up yep. soon. So as that gets closer, you know, obviously we'll be throwing that stuff out there yeah. because, hey, we'd love to meet you. We would. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Um, and we want to get you guys some apparel as well. So yeah, Absolutely. dive in there. Animal facts. Animal facts. Ashley and Central Howe, be better. Gotta bring us some good stuff. <laughs> Come on, Ash. <laughs> be better. Good stuff. Good stuff. All, All right. right, guys. Well, again, thank you, Tip Hat Media. Thank you, Visionary Meals. Um, I think that's all we got for today. So deliberately linked, sign it out. See you next time.